Back in 2019, we all watched the 19-year-old Justin Ross dominate NFL DBs in the national championship game. If somebody told you this 6'4", 205-pound true freshman dominating against the top competition on the biggest stage would eventually go completely undrafted only a few years later, you would have had that person locked in an institution. But guess what? Four years later, and that person would have actually been freed because the unthinkable actually came to pass. The NFL Draft is a place where football fans get to watch in real time as lifelong dreams come true. But in the case of Justin Ross, people were forced to sit and watch as his dreams were ultimately shattered. In 2018, as a true freshman, star Clemson receiver Justin Ross looked like a surefire first round pick. But due to medical concerns, this past weekend, Justin didn't just slip in the draft, he slipped completely out of it. How does a guy go from a surefire first round pick after balling out at a wide receiver powerhouse like Clemson at that to not being drafted at all, despite the fact that he has no character concerns to speak of. Today, we're gonna quickly go through the story up to this point of Justin Ross and how he went from a first round draft pick to an undrafted free agent. Chew the way. Okay, real quick before we jump in, today's video is sponsored by Manscaped. So we all into stats on this channel, but I got a scary one for you. One man, every hour of every day, is diagnosed with testicular cancer. It's actually the most common form of cancer for males between the ages of 15 and 35. Now, April was National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month, but even though the month has passed, your awareness should remain. Men's health and cancer prevention screening is important. I know we don't be really trying to hear all that sometimes, but you know that I'm right. So with men's health and hygiene in mind, Manscaped is partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to help you take care of yourself down there. And considering the primary use for Manscaped products, it's a pretty natural partnership, makes a lot of sense. So while you're down there using your Manscaped products, just remember to check yourself for testicular cancer with easy at-home self-checks. Because together, well, the shirt says it all. Also, to help guys to remember to check themselves for testicular cancer, for a limited time, you can get Manscaped's brand new special edition TCS Lawnmower 4.0 Electric Waterproof Trimmer. It's a special collector's item and there was only 10,000 of these made, so get yours today, cause once they gone, they gone. And with the launch of the new special edition Lawnmower 4.0 Purple Trimmer, Manscaped is gonna be donating $50,000 to their longtime partner, the Testicular Cancer Society, to help those impacted by testicular cancer. To purchase the special edition TCS Lawnmower 4.0 to support this cause, or for more info on how you can perform simple routine self-checks at home, visit manscaped.com slash TCS. And if you wanna help support the mission by donating directly, you can visit testicularcancersociety.org. And as always, you can use my code TCSFLIMLO for 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com slash flimlo. Yo, shout out to Manscaped once again for sponsoring the video. And without further ado, let's get For starters, let's go back about eight years, back to 2014. At this point, Justin was just a freshman at Central High School in Phoenix City, Alabama. And despite his promising talents on the field, the tall, slender receiver built up the courage to go to his mom and let her know that he was quitting football. He would instead be taking his talents over to the basketball court. Well, if you ever told any military veteran that you was about to quit anything, you know that conversation rarely goes the way you expect it. When asked to state his reasons, Justin simply felt he wasn't having much fun in football, and he believed he'd have a lot more fun on the basketball court. I actually feel where he's coming from too, and I think a lot of y'all who may have played receiver back in the day like me, you can probably relate to this. I've actually told this story a couple of times before, but I actually would quit football every year when I was in high school as soon as basketball season would roll around. I did that as a freshman, sophomore, and a junior. So 
I get it. It's something about that damn basketball court and how the fans are so close and there's no helmet. It just always seems to call out to wide receivers. And while Justin did jump on the court where he had great success, he obviously didn't quit football as his high school coach was able to convince him to stick it out for the long term. The freshman stayed on the gridiron and after only one season, he already knew he made the right choice. So during the spring between his high school freshman and sophomore seasons, Justin received not one but two scholarship offers from big time SEC programs, Mississippi State and Kentucky. As he continued to hone his skills and began to grow into what would eventually become a 6'4", 200 plus pound frame, Dew stacked up more and more offers, each one bigger than the last. As a senior he caught 34 passes for 730 yards and 13 touchdowns, leading his school to a 12-1 record in the 7A state semifinal. Justin was ranked the number two receiver in the state of Alabama, and Nick Saban and company have been on him hard since at least his junior season. But Justin didn't join the Crimson Tide. He instead turned the tide when he became the first top Alabama high school player to not attend the University of Alabama since 2005. He instead decided that he was headed to Clemson, a visit that he enjoyed so much that he stopped midway through the visit to call his mom and let her know that he'd made up his mind. And while Alabama would of course continue to have success, this is a recruiting loss that would come back to hunt Justin's hometown Crimson Tide. 2018 during his freshman season is when many of us were introduced to Justin for the very first time, as dude jumped onto the scene during that year's college football playoffs. But a few months before he would become a household name, Justin played his first collegiate game. And in that one, he only came away with 16 yards on two catches. In his second game, he only came away with three catches. Only this time, those three grabs netted him over 100 yards receiving and his first collegiate touchdown. Through the 12 game regular season and the ACC championship game, Justin racked up 34 catches for 699 yards and six TDs. Not too bad for a freshman. But little did everyone know that dude had actually saved his very best for last. In the 2018 college football playoff, number two Clemson faced off against number three Notre Dame. Justin went off six catches for 148 yards and two touchdowns as Clemson smashed Notre Dame and cruised to a national championship appearance. Their number two Clemson would face Justin's hometown Alabama Crimson Tide, the number one ranked team in college football. As usual, Bama's secondary was stacked with NFL guys, Patrick Sertain and Xavier McKinney just to name a few. Justin caught passes on all of them, but since he was a true freshman at the time, he ended up drawing some coverage versus fellow freshman Savion Smith and others, matchups that he really took advantage of. This man finished what was the biggest game of his life with the best stat line of his life. Six catches for 153 yards and one touchdown as he made circus catch after circus catch big play after big play. It was clear to everybody watching the game that we were watching a future first round pick, no question. Not to mention the fact that Clemson has put some absolute beastly receivers into the league already. We talking D-Hop, Sammy Watkins, Martavius Bryant to Mike Williams. Rising Cincinnati Bengal star T. Higgins was actually Justin's teammate at the time. Both born in 1999, with T being one class ahead because he was born in January and Justin was born in December. They were both great receivers at Clemson and made for an extremely deadly duo of 6'4 powerhouses. In the two years they played together, they put up extremely similar numbers in the exact same system. And when you look at what T. Higgins has done for my Cincinnati Bengals already in his young career, it's not hard to imagine Justin Ross following a similar trajectory had things continued to go as planned. But only a couple of years after he burst onto the scene and something unforeseen would threaten to end Justin's football career. And this time, it was not his love of another sport. Justin was born with the gift to play wide receiver, a gift that he quickly grew to fully appreciate, evident by the way he harnessed that gift into undeniable NFL talent. But that gift wasn't the only thing Justin was born with. Unfortunately, he was also born with Klippelfeld syndrome, a condition characterized by a congenital fusion in his spine, meaning that any two of the seven bones in the neck are abnormally fused together. This sometimes makes it painful, difficult, or even impossible to fully turn the neck. A pretty damn cruel affliction for a wide receiver. After two years at Clemson, Justin only needed one more to officially be eligible 
before the NFL draft. Dude was a surefire NFL player after his freshman season. But as you know, the NFL rules state that you have to be three years out of high school in order to go to the league, which usually translates to three years in college football. That's the rule, been in place forever, not to mention I'm sure Justin loved his time at Clemson and wasn't necessarily in a hurry to leave. I'm sure the future NFL star was actually looking forward to his final spring training camp in college. But during spring practice, and we talking the spring going into his junior season, Justin runs a routine slant pattern in practice and takes a hit from a linebacker, not even an exceedingly hard hit according to Justin, he'd taken much worse hits before. But following the hit, Justin felt some numbness in his neck. But, and if y'all played football before, y'all already know what he assumed. He thought it was just a stinger. So a few days pass and Justin's feeling fine. And he's actually in the locker room getting ready to go to yet another practice. But then Clemson head coach Dabo Sweeney comes in and he says, hey, I need to talk to you in my office. So Justin goes in and there's Dabo, a team of doctors, and even Justin's mom has called in on the phone. They was all there to deliver bad news. They told Justin about his condition and more importantly, what it meant. He finds out he's got this rare condition and that he may need surgery, but the worst of it is when he hears this team of doctors tell him that he may never play football again. Bro, can you imagine this? We talking about a clear first rounder, take a little bitty hit in practice, I'm fine. What you mean? I can never play football again. Just that stark shift of dressing out to go to practice feeling perfectly fine and then five minutes later you can never play again like what tears rolled down justin's face as he had to feel completely blindsided instantly robbed of his destiny see this is why i can't understand how a cat like dabo sweeney can be so outspoken against nil or college players getting paid if you're not familiar with what i'm talking about dabo sweeney is completely against this he's been very outspoken about it but dabo makes tens of millions of dollars and he's watch a kid like this bring in millions for the school be destined to eventually make millions but then he has this one random hit at spring practice change everything for him and i understand he was born with a specific condition but he'd been fine up to this point and had the whole nil situation already been a thing back then he would have at least walked away with some type of bread between his freshman and sophomore season now here's the thing at that time there's obviously no way Dabo could have known that this man was going to eventually go undrafted i'm sure only now now, within the last day or two has he fully realized like how huge of an impact this is gonna have on this kid and not just this kid we talking about his entire financial future man his family okay so before i fully go in on Dabo, i'm gonna wait and see what he got to say about this and see if he changes his tune because these nil deals give these kids an opportunity to at least cash in on a fraction of their eventual worth and it kind of serves as at least a little bit of insurance in case something like this was to happen anyway that's just a little side note back to the story justin's initial sadness probably didn't last long because i understand how most top athletes are wired don't get me wrong i'm sure some underlying sadness kind of laid there in the background but i would bet money that after that initial sadness justin's next thought was probably okay what do i have to do I'ma beat this. Issue is the condition is so rare, there actually aren't any other known football players who have had this problem. Here's a quote from Dr. David Okonkwo. Justin has a condition that's very rare, and to my knowledge, there's no president of another high-level American football player with this condition playing football. So we were paving new road as we went through the process. At the time, no doctor would clear Justin to play again. Of course, he got a second and third and fourth and fifth opinion. He's literally fighting for his career then right during that time 2020 what happens the pandemic hit everything shuts down and the medical field is extremely busy so communication with doctors is now even more infrequent and i know a lot of people struggle during the pandemic with just the isolation and so much time to think and i can only imagine how tough this was for justin ross he had his football world completely halted out of nowhere and then the actual world also gets halted during that same time period just like that everything was different and he had to be thinking to himself will things ever be the same again he stayed strong and eventually justin got an appointment with dr Reconquo. this is the same doctor who performed surgery on ryan shazier so he's got a really good track record then after a long series of tests the doctor agreed to do justin's surgery 
The surgery was a success, but Dr. Okonkwo still cautioned that even if he did everything right in the rehab process, there was still the possibility that Justin would never take the field again. But Justin let that little drop of hope fuel him and he got to work. He rehabbed for a full year and Dr. Okonkwo determined that his spine had healed enough for Justin to once again play football. But with that said, there were still many other doctors who advised against it as they just did not feel it was safe. It actually took several more months after he was cleared by the doctor for Clemson to clear him. Eventually they did. But then, and y'all not gonna believe this, on the day that Justin was scheduled to return to practice, he actually tested positive for COVID. And this wasn't one of them asymptomatic type situations. My man got hit hard by it. So you work, 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 build all the way back up. Baby, we about to go to practice and boom, just get hit with some boom, just blindsided with something else, man. Damn. The virus ended up causing Justin to drop 15 pounds in just a couple of weeks. And like it did many other people, it greatly affected his breathing. So when he finally got back to the practice field, this was just one more thing he had to deal with as if spinal surgery wasn't enough. Justin was eased back into play and his neck slash spine was fine. When he took his first hit and he popped up and was okay, this was a huge sigh of relief for everybody involved. But the sudden ramp up in physical activity affected his body in other ways as he developed a stress fracture in his foot which he decided to play through. Now it's a broken bone in your foot so I don't need to explain how that would make it much harder to play football, especially at wide receiver where you're running cutting and jumping constantly. Justin played most of the season, but he did set out the final three games to go ahead and get surgery on his foot. Playing with a broken bone in his foot, Justin didn't have a great season, but honestly, it wasn't a bad one either. 47 catches for 524 yards and three touchdowns, coming off spinal surgery, dealing with the virus, and playing with a broken foot. I would say this is pretty impressive, not to mention like I said he did not play the final three games as he shut it down to go ahead and get the surgery on his foot. Justin and his team had hoped that those three extra weeks would allow him to be fully healthy by the time his NFL Pro Day rolled around, but unfortunately that wasn't really the case. Still not 100%, he ended up running a 4.64 and only recorded a 31 and a half inch vertical, which even at 6'4 isn't great, but still not completely terrible. There are players right now in the NFL who play and play well at this size who had similar athletic testing. Because of that and the fact that teams knew that Justin wasn't fully healthy, the surefire first round pick had fallen to likely a third or fourth rounder in most people's minds. Of course, his injury history was concerning, but the upside of his talent was so great, he came from a great wide receiver pipeline and we'd seen him perform on the biggest stages. Knowing all of that going into the draft, most people figured that it's only going to take one team to gamble a fourth or fifth round pick to get the man in the building and give him some time to get completely healthy and who knows in a year or two it might have turned out that you had the biggest steal in the entire draft. When the draft rolled around though, he wasn't taken on day two at all. Uh, okay, cool early day three pick, you know, we can work with that. But round after round, pick after pick, no Justin Raw selection. Hell, I'm gonna be honest, I wanted the Bengals to take him since the fourth round. I, along with pretty much fans of every other team, was absolutely pissed that our teams didn't have the foresight to at least gamble a six or a seven, he might turn back into the old Justin. Like with that said, of course, NFL teams are privy to much more information than we, the public are. I fully understand that. I'm just trying to convey to you the feelings that people was feeling as this was happening. I'm trying to basically put you in the room. Now, speaking of being in the room, can you imagine what this whole ordeal must have been like for Justin Ross. For a guy who was absolutely seen as a future first round pick, you know he dreamed of this day. He watched teammates go through this process time after time. And you just know that he would sit there and envision the exact same thing for himself. I'm pretty sure in his wildest dreams, he never imagined a full draft would go by and nobody would call his name. But ultimately, it wasn't meant to be and he slips out of the draft completely.
Like I said in the intro, the NFL draft is usually a place where football fans get to watch dreams come true. But for Justin Ross, it unfortunately ended up being a place where his dreams were shattered. Some doctors believe, as sad as the story is, that it may actually be for the best. They believe that if Justin plays in the NFL and takes the wrong type of hit, that this story could be a lot more tragic than it already is. Because of that, it's believed that he's unlikely to be cleared for NFL contact despite taking the field in college during the 2021 season following his surgery. But ultimately, no team even brought Justin in during their top 30 visits, where NFL teams get to have conversations to get a feel for guys and often take a closer look at their medical situations. As of the time of me recording this video, tons of undrafted free agents are signing with NFL teams. Many won't make the final roster, but they're still ecstatic to be getting an opportunity. Justin Ross, on the other hand, is still waiting for an opportunity of his own as he remains unsigned. Will an NFL team take a chance on Justin? Or will his complicated medical history keep him from getting an opportunity with an NFL team? Only time will tell how this story ends and if Justin Ross will be able to achieve his ultimate dream that he seemed absolutely destined for only a few years ago. But up to this point, that's the story of how Justin Ross went from a first round pick to an NFL undrafted free agent.